lovely humans, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. Uh, my name's Jamie, and, and I'm a moderately large fan of the Harry Potter series. And I'm doing my best to instill that into my children as well. So every single year, starting on September 1st or around there, we start our yearly watching of the Harry Potter series, obviously starting with the first and ending with the seventh, eighth, whatever. <laughs> and this year was no different. But if you'll allow me a little bit of backstory, what was different this year is that my sister and her children just moved to the area and we have literally never lived next to each other. And her kids love Harry Potter as well. So as a wedding planner, <laughs> I'm putting on elaborate events, what do I do? I decide to throw a Harry Potter themed September 1st party and invite them over because we wanted them to enjoy the magic just as much as we do. And maybe just also a teensy bit of an excuse for me to decorate my house. Uh, a la Hogwarts. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Now, in order to fully prepare my nephews and niece for what they were getting into, I, of course, had to send them a letter, complete with the exact font that you will find on the outside of the envelope and the shape of the envelope as well, which I will leave linked down in the description box for you if you are interested in replicating this yourself. Of course, you don't need to do what we did and print it on a heavy textured cardstock. I just wanted it to feel as realistic as possible, and you could easily print this directly onto an envelope instead of creating your own. We were just really excited about going the extra mile, which includes, but is not limited to, an actual red wax seal. They didn't have an H available at Joann's when I went shopping, so I settled for a Fleur de Lis instead because it's regal and and stuff and that was honestly the best option they had also because i worked with wax seals on repeated occasions i prefer to pour them and stamp them on a silicone mat or you can do it on parchment paper if you choose to do that instead as opposed to directly on the paper because in the off chance my nephews and niece might want to save this i didn't want the paper of the envelope to be all torn uh, from them pulling it open in hindsight i made the font too big on the front of the envelope but i don't think the kids really cared <laughs> and after strategically folding them and using these really cool little glue dots called Zots. Again, anything I can link down below, I will. And then just use an additional glue dot to press the wax seal into place. And once they were officially invited, and maybe a little bit excited, <laughs> we got to work. I wanted to show you a little bit of a before of what this space looks like because I lend very heavily towards the dark academia design style anyways. So I knew this room and my home in general would turn into Harry Potter land probably pretty quickly because I already like this general aesthetic. But again, I wanted to make sure that whatever we were using to decorate gave the overall Hogwarts vibe, which to me is very vintage and textured and academic and definitely involves a lot of greens and ideally a botanical print or two, which conveniently is basically dark academia. And by using not branded items in my home, I can use them over and over again, as opposed to everything screaming Harry Potter TM that really only the truly committed would use as everyday decor. Not gonna lie, Isabella did a fantastic job with this little corner. It's already very botanical heavy. We already have some of those prints, but to take full advantage of the large ladder and the foliage to house Aragog's family really gave it the perfect forbidden forest vibe. And it would not be a proper Harry Potter party, <laughs> say that 10 times fast, if I didn't hang some stinking candles. Now I didn't do the paper and the little tea light trick. I used much more, I don't know, like sophisticated looking candles instead because I wanted it to feel a lot more realistic. So of course, using clear fishing line and some clear thumbtacks, I was able to hang them at varying heights on each side of the TV so they would artfully frame our movie night. Next up, it's time for the pumpkin pile. This, in my mind, was intended to feel a lot like the pile of pumpkins that Buckbeak lays in outside of Hagrid's hut by just using a ton of realistic looking pumpkins stacked atop one another. Busting out a DIY I did last year, I got this incredible SVG file for the Dark Mark Tattoo Studio, and it is the perfect example of a nod to the Harry Potter theme without being too drastically literal. Pretty sure this is actually a child's toy, but we got an oversized boa constrictor to set somewhere as well to give off Nagini vibes. And of course, using no shortage of amber bottles. 
Literally the day of the party, we went thrifting beforehand and scored both of these books that open up and I knew that these would be the perfect holders for the party favors that I got, which of course are Harry Potter glasses and these wands that turn into pencils. Again, I will leave those linked down below. They were a huge hit with the kids. And I tried to be patient enough to let my son do this on his own, but uh, I just it, I just helped a little bit, just a little bit of intervening. Otherwise, <laughs> the box wouldn't close. <laughs> but I did let him carry them all by himself. Do we get points for that one? To set up at this little black table we have right next to our entryway, which I had a total vision for because that would be what the kids would see first. Another little thing I picked up at the thrift store was actually this little robin. Sparrow, small bird. I had every intent to paint it black so it would look like a raven before they got here. And I didn't have time, but I use it anyways. Another great example of hinting to the theme without actually being literal, I collect framed butterflies. And this little cutie is honestly one of my favorites because it's so tiny. And of course, if you happen to have some half alive propagations lying around, bonus points if they are in amber bottles. Gives off subtle but intentional herbology vibes. Just maybe pull out the dead leaves before you start filming. And of course, you cannot go wrong with old books, which I happen to have quite a few of. The last thrift score for today is this umbrella stand, which happened to be positively perfect for this really cheap broom, I actually, that I got at Party City. It was only $6. And here we have the welcome table in all of its glory. I'm super pleased with how it turned out and, of course, the sorting hat, but it's missing something. Now, you can't say you didn't see this coming, okay? But uh, keep your eyeball out for uh, just a small typo, okay? I decided to write left-handed so it would look messier, which indeed did work, but I also forgot how to spell plurals, okay? <laughs> and if you're wondering if red lipstick is a nightmare to get off of a mirror, it is. Proceed with caution. Look at the concentration on my face. <laughs> I take Harry Potter night very seriously, but we are a house of only one secret. For the table itself, I decided to keep it super simple because we weren't actually planning on really doing much in this space, but I wanted to have some snacks ready to go. So I just took a couple of old dried gourds and some tiny pumpkins, mixed in some of those every flavor jelly beans and some empty snack containers that I planned on making some popcorn for. Now this idea is completely unoriginal. I know a bunch of people do it, but it's so stinking cute. If you were gonna throw out a Harry Potter themed event, get these delicate little wings off of Amazon and stick them on the Ferrero Rocher candies because then you have little golden snitches for everybody and it's so cute oh my gosh i'm so lame filming myself <laughs> let's check and see where we're at really quick we have the welcome table with the sorting hat books herbology vibes somehow hedwig ended up on this table and uh some creepy writing. <laughs> now this next part, I didn't get any footage of us putting it up, but I'm pretty sure you can figure out how this happened. Fishing line, tape, and clear thumbtacks. For the win, again, I got these off of Amazon. It was really inexpensive for these, so I much preferred buying them pre-done than attempting to make them myself. One of our girls sweetly put together the three broomsticks board, and we ran out of G's. So both Moogles and Muggles can eat at your own risk. But I forgot to mention one very important fact. We got fog machines, baby. <laughs> Is this not the most dreamy, foggy, forbidden forest, romantic situation you've ever seen in your life? Don't tell me it's not. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet now and just let you enjoy the general splendor.
So what do you think? I am really smitten with how it turned out. While there is a ton of Harry Potter decor out there that you could purchase for a party, I like when the theme is a little bit more implied rather than literally stated, because I think it creates a little bit more of like a sophisticated feeling, you know what I'm saying? It feels more like you're actually at Hogwarts instead of just seeing literally everything written in the Harry Potter font, which we love, by the way, like very creative. But by using some of the things we have around our house or you could pick up at the thrift store, you can truly fine tune the details to make it a much more immersive experience instead of just a bunch of trademarked items. So that's what we have for today's video guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like Harry Potter, stick around. Actually, the very next video I release is going to be a vlog of what we ended up doing at the Harry Potter party, which includes some trivia, so you can test yourself to see if you know these things uh, just as well as the kids do. Um, I wasn't allowed to play, though, because I knew all the answers. <laughs> and wiping the floor with the children in a trivia game is a little frowned upon, you know? I, I, I wanted them to enjoy themselves. And so if you haven't already, jump on down there, hit that like button, and subscribe for more Harry Potter content that comes out every once in a while when <laughs> the fall season hits. Because I just can't stop myself. <laughs> and until next time, bye guys! <laughs>